first thing in the morning, right? And this is a recipe for disaster. This is a recipe that sets them up for high sugar spike and cravings for the rest of the day. Who, who the hell's want to count calories all the time? You know, you're out and you're like, okay, so it's a medium high, 1,500, 1,700 per day. Who the hell cares, right? And when you're eating out, do you, do you notice why like most restaurants will give you um, bread to snack on first, right? You're constantly wanting more and more and more and craving more and more. And the more you eat it, the more you want it. And then you just keep on going, going, going. The reason for having, um, protein first is because hey everyone welcome uh so today i want to talk about how to control cravings and shed the pounds and aside from stress and emotional regulation controlling craving is one of the top reasons why women are having trouble with their weight and also the health as well too so today i want to go into why we have cravings and to help you understand that it's not a matter of only the lack of willpower but there's also underlying physiology so that that way you can understand that and change the way that you view food make better choice of your food and also better in your health okay so why am i sharing this like many women i struggle with cravings and it negatively in, like impacted it affected my health um i mean after the birth of my two children i was eating everything that's inside i had so much craving for the sweets and no matter how much i try to work on and exercising losing weight was a struggle and it wasn't until i realized that hey you know what a lot of it has to do with our diet, what we put into our body that affects us. So my name is Jenny Nguyen. I'm an ER registered nurse, and I've been nursing for about 17 years, and I'm also a nutrition health coach. And I've seen so many people suffer with poor health. I mean, myself, I was one of those people, and it wasn't until I learned how to deal with the cravings and change the choices um, I make to better my health. And not only does it help me physically, but also mentally as well too. And even as a, a nurse, right, what I thought was healthy then turns out to be not so healthy for me. And that is why I had health issues for three years straight. And I thought to myself, what would happen to me, you know, if I didn't change the course of my future? What would happen to my children? If I'm at this age and I'm unhealthy, what happened to them when they become my age? They would be worse off because of what I don't know and what I'm, because what I'm eating, what I'm feeding them, it's pretty much, if it doesn't help me, why would it help them as well too? So that's why it's, I, I do this because I have experienced it myself and I realized that, you know, the poor food choice that I made can affect my health and, you know, not just only my cravings, but my weight, my health. I had all these signs and symptoms that didn't go away until I changed my diet. So that's why I want to focus on this. I want to share with you. And for someone who has their health, they don't really think much of it, but for someone who doesn't at all, all they want to do or all they want is to be healthy. So here we go. And um, let's dive into what controlling craving and why is important. And not only is it helping with you to lose your weight, um, to maintain your healthy weight, but also in helping you reduce the unwanted diseases as well too. Because I've seen so many patients that come into the ER struggling and wondering what can they do about it, right? There's definitely something that we can do to change the course of our, not only our cravings, our weight, but also our health. So why do we get cravings? Um, our body is a great communicator. And what it does is that it will tell us what it wants and tell us what it doesn't want. So our body's job is to function properly and it requires energy or fuel. And that energy comes from in the form of glucose most of the time. So glucose is a form of sugar and that gets broken down and used as energy for our brain, our muscle. Overall, a lot of processes, all our body processes requires the sugar, requires the glucose in order to function. 
right? So when our body is low of energy, uh, our body, like powerful organ called the brain, <laughs> tells us like, hey, I need fuel. And that's when we reach out for food and drink to get that energy. So the thing is this, the type of fuel we eat nowadays are usually more in refined food, high fat, take up, high carbs. And, you know, they come from a box with nutritional information and facts on it. And that's where, that's where we get into this vicious craving cycle. Um, even though that we're eating, thinking that we're fueling our body with energy so that we can satisfy our hunger, we are actually creating more cravings with these types of food because um, of the high, most especially <laughs> with the high sugar food. And what sugar is, I mean, we need a certain amount of sugar in order to function, but too much of it is not good. It's detrimental for our health. Just think of it like this. The circulation is simply, simple form. A circulation, think about how the blood flow. If it's more liquidy, more watery, it's easier to flow, nicer, right? Our heart doesn't have to work extra hard. And whereas if it's thick, honey, you know, like harder to move, the heart, the body has to work harder. So when we get, eat sugar, you know, like especially the high refined sugar um, that we get from cookies, ice cream, chocolate, cake, donuts, all the delicious things that's readily available and that's everywhere, you know, every street corner has it, it releases a surge of dopamine. And dopamine is this feel good hormone, rewarding hormone that gives us the high of energy and, you know, it makes us addictive you know, like it's so addictive and it makes it like, oh, I want more of that, that feel good. Who doesn't want to feel good, right? And because of it's giving us this mini little high, mini little addiction from the sugar rush, we want it more, right? And not only that, after this sugar spike, so our sugar goes up from the high refined food, high processed food, high sugary food that we eat and our sugar drops. Right, so then our brain tells us our brain, it's an amazing organ. Our brain uses up to up about 25% of the fuel, the sugar, the glucose that's in our body, right? And so it feels like this low energy and it's telling us, hello, get me more energy, get me some energy. And then so that's why when we have more cravings, we, we after we eat our food, and then we feel like especially the high processed food because it gets absorbed so fast and it spikes up our sugar. So then not only do we get the high, then we get the low and our, our body telling us like, we need more because, you know, I need to satisfy this craving. My body needs to feel. And because it's also low in nutrients, we're not getting the right nutrients as well too. So even after all the eating, especially when we eat the high sugary food, so I mentioned like cookies, chocolate, candy, cake, donut, and ice cream, the stuff that I used to love and ate, I literally ate everything of that, everything, um, and too much of it. <laughs> we think that we're full and satisfied, but because of that, like I mentioned, because of the yo-yoing, our, our glycine index from these kind of food, we want to feel good. We want to have that feel good, you know, feelings. And not only that, you know, our hormones, our, our, our cravings kicked in because of the, the drop in the, the, the glycemic index and our sugar you know, spiked, it, it spiked up, then it dropped. So it's an endless vicious cycle because we'll reach for another cookie thinking that, oh, that's gonna help, right? When actually it will make the cycle worse. Right? You're constantly wanting more and more and more and craving more and more. And the more you eat it, the more you want it. And then you just keep on going, going, going. So not only that, over time, we become, you know, like constantly having this high sugary food. And then, you know, the insulin, the insulin is um, what breaks down or what, what tells our body to say, hey, it's, it's a hormone, it tells our body to be like, hey, I have too much sugar in my system, in my bloodstream, let's store some of it. Right. So what, what it is, is that it would tell our muscle, our, our, like our liver to store it as glycogen, like glucose in a form of glycogen. And then it will, not only that, 
store the excess sugar in our fat tissue. So for another day when we need to use that for fuel. And over time, the insulin doesn't work as well as before, right? We need a higher dose and our body doesn't respond as well. It's almost like as if it gets numb with the high level of insulin that's being you know, pushed out all the time just because of the high sugar, insulin, insulin, insulin. Over time, your body gets numb. It's like, okay, now I need a higher dose of insulin to work with those high sugar so that I can use it and also like store it, right? So that's, that's what happens. And not only that, it, it just makes the cycle worse. So you can see why insulin, high sugar, high level of insulin um, doesn't help uh, in a way that it, yes, it does help so that, you know, we regulate our sugar, blood sugar, but it doesn't help because our body is going to be gaining weight. It's telling us, hey, store that away for another day because we have excess. And that's where uncontrolled craving can lead to weight gain because when you not only do you have that craving and you're not getting the nutrients, you're also storing all that excess sugar into fat. That's where it happens. So not only that, over time, because we have this high sugar food, our body start to break down, become, we become less, you know, like we don't respond to the insulin as well. We become more resistant. And that is where we are likely to get diabetic type two. So that's what happens when you get an overload, our cells just overloading the sugar and then insulin just constantly being produced. But because the numbing effect, we build such a tolerance, it doesn't work as well. So we develop diabetes types too. Okay, so knowing this, knowing these ideas, how will this help us with weight loss, right? So, I mean, number one, I think we know that, you know, controlling our craving will help with the sugar spikes and, you know, the highs and the low of the sugar. Not only will it help us in controlling our cravings, but it will also help us with our mood. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, um, if you really pay attention, there are times when, you know, your sugar is high, you're all so bouncy, so energetic and everything like that. And then when your sugar is low, you're kind of like so tired. Yeah, it not only affects our cravings, our mood, our energy level, right? They, they go hand in hand and our ability to focus as well too. Our, our brain is kind of like one minute, it gets a rush of sugar the next minute, it just kind of drops. So then we're kind of like, oh, I need more fuel. Like we're more, more emotional and steady when we go through that roller coaster up and down of a sugar spike. When we're down, when we have to, you know, we want something to pick us up. And, you know, like we'll have like, because our sugar spike, sugar level gone low, we are likely to have less willpower because it's like a stressor. It's like, okay, I want to get my needs met. And it's like being hangry, you know, when you're, when you're, oh, when you're, you ever notice when you're hungry and you go to the supermarket, you're going to like, I'm going to buy this, that. You literally buy everything that's available because you just want to satisfy that craving. You just want to make sure you get that fuel and energy. And it doesn't matter if it comes in a chocolate bar, ice cream, cookies, vegetable, fruits. You're going to likely to pick up this, the bag of chips that's right there that you didn't notice. You're going to likely to pick up that box of chocolate chips cookie and you didn't even realize like, darn, this is not exactly what I had in mind for my grocery list, right? So that's why it's important that we maintain our sugar level to a steady amount so that we can help with, you know, our cravings and not only that helps with our weight loss. So number two, here's what we can do. What we can do is that it will help us understand is will help us choose better food so that we don't get the roller coasters of sugar highs up and down and the mood swing with it. Um, this will affect our behavior as well too, as I give you an example of how grocery shopping, instead of just for your list, you end up buying way more <laughs> of the stuff that you didn't want to put in your pantry in the first place. So to help us lose weight, um, we, we're getting the right nutrients from the right food instead of from the high calorie food. So like 
the food that's high in sugar, empty calories, empty nutrients, like food and cookies, chocolate cakes and candies like that, you know, it helps to make better decisions of knowing that, okay, there's certain food that is actually better, that actually helps stable and steady the regulation of like, you know, the blood sugar instead of the ups and downs and all that. So here's a solution. Instead of eating a high sugary food, I know it's hard to, but at least try to include this in your meal. So most of the food that is like found in processed food, like high processed food, refined sugar, like, um, you know, like I mentioned above, instead grab a fruit. Yes, there is sugar in fruits, but the thing that helps is the fiber. It has fiber and the fiber helps balance out our sugar by giving us little bits and bits of sugar here and there so that we're not as the gut as they go through our body the gut digests it it's giving us little bits of sugar not like a whole rush of like refined sugar bam right in our right in our our or that right in our digestive system and gets absorbed so quickly into our bloodstream there are some tips I, I created some tips because not only did I implement these tips and I found it useful for me. I've noticed that you know, through studying, doing reading, doing research, and um, listening to other podcasts, and noticing like, hey, you know what? Other people are doing this as well, and that's what they found useful. And so I want to share it with you so that you can manage your cravings and also better, you know, control your weight so that you become healthier. You know, right? So here's a tip. Have protein for breakfast instead of your typical <laughs> cereal and milk, or if you have a coffee and a donut, or if you have a muffin and orange juice, have a breakfast with protein in it. So I've seen like, you know why this, I know this happens because I've seen a lot of my coworkers, um, they have trouble losing weight because they'll have a donut and coffee first thing in the morning, right? And this is a recipe for disaster. This is a recipe that sets them up for high sugar spike and cravings for the rest of the day. So the reason for having um, protein first is because you get your essential amino acid. You know, you need those essential amino acids because your body can't produce it. So you have to get it in the form of food. Right, so the body can function properly, right? And proteins are more filling, um, so you're less likely to overeat. And not only that, you don't get the sugar spike um, as much compared to like eating protein compared to if you're having a high sugary uh, food for a morning, you know, in the in the for bre breakfast. Number two is eat your vegetables. So why do I say eat your vegetables? Vegetables have fibers. It has phytonutrients. It has minerals. It has uh, vitamins, it's just so many good things in it, antioxidant, right? But what it is, the important thing is that the fiber, the fiber that is in the vegetables gives, makes it so that, you know, the sugar is being released slowly into the bloodstream. That's what it is. It's, it's slow release so that you can control steady release of sugar, get, you know, release of your glucose into your bloodstream compared to the high sugary, food that um, you know you eat right donut right um so instead of you know having the high sugar food you know get a you know have some vegetable with it have some vegetable first you know before you have the sugar food so let's say if you're gonna in the morning time you know like if you decide to have some have some carrots carrot first and then have whatever donut sweet whatever sweet food that you have after right it's actually better for you because it helps regulate your sugar or if you decided to have like let's say you go out right let's say you you want to have like bread or pasta have your vegetables have your salad first before you have your pasta it will help you steady your blood sugar level and when you're eating out do you, do you notice why like most restaurants will give you um, bread to snack on first and it's like it's because you know, it's because they want you to eat more. The starchy food, the starchy sugar from the bread increases your cravings and you want to order more items on the menu. And not only that, it gives you this like sugary high and, and you know, this dopamine effect because you feel good. You want to like, hey, I, I'm feeling great. I want to order this, I want to order that. And that's just, that's just the way that, well, that's how it works. But 
regardless. So eat your vegetables and eat it first um, during your meal. That's gonna help you regulate your sugar a little bit more. And number three, stop counting calories. I don't count calories because I find it's useless. It takes up a lot of my time. And I mean, it's not sustainable. And not only that, calories does not tell us anything about the food. It only tells us the amount of energy that is provided by that food. So you may be eating, you know, like a low amount of calorie and still not lose weight because of the type of food that you eat, right? So let's say you get your calories from high refined sugar processed food, and you're more likely to have cravings because of the fluctuation of the blood sugar. And not only that, you're not getting the nutrients that your body eats. And it would tell you like, hey, I don't have enough of vitamin A, C, E, D, K, vitamin B, and all that stuff, right? I don't have enough of it from these high sugary, high starchy food. I need them. And then your body's gonna be like, I need to get them, right? So, and what does this, you know, like, and what does it tell you, uh, you know, like it will tell us to eat, right? So that's how our body, what our body tells us, it's really important. And I think one of the things that we gotta listen to our body and hear what it's telling us, right? And not only that, you know, counting calories, I find it's like, I don't know about you, like it's so stressful because who, who the hell's wanna count calories all the time? You know, you're out and you're like counting, Okay, so it's a medium high, 1,500, 1,700 per day. Who the hell cares, right? And not only that, because of that, it's making it more stressful. So then the more stressed you are, the, your body's going to release cortisol, which increases your blood sugar in the bloodstream. And over time, increasing cortisol, the stress hormone will dampen your insulin level. So not insulin level, but like your insulin, making it more resistant. So like, you know how it's like chronic stress causes a lot of illnesses and I don't want to stress myself out more than I have to. I mean, like under stress, you know, not only that, people have the tendency to reach for comfort food too, right? So that means they'll end up getting, you know, picking up the things that, you know, makes them feel good at that time. But most of the time it's actually not vegetables and it's usually in like a bag of chips, or a cup of ice cream or some cookie or things like that, which is actually doesn't help. It actually does the reverse. It makes it even worse. So managing stress, forget about the calorie counting, listen to your body. So this is one of the tricks that I actually do. I know this might, uh, this might be like a little extreme for some of you, but <laughs> I'm on a point in my life where I can do this because my health is important to me. So I hardly eat food that is in a package, in a box, process. Nowadays, most of my food comes from whole food. So many that I can see and recognize that, hey, it's an apple, uh, you know, it's a beef, you know, it's broccoli. You know, I can recognize those food. They're in the whole form, natural form, right? And I can see it, you know, like that, oh, this is a peach, right? And, you know, that way, I don't, I don't want to count calories. And not only that, I'll eat and I let my body tell me when it's full. So I just pretty much listen to like, oh, okay. I'm, I feel like I'm full now, like, you know, then I'll stop eating, right? And, and that's, that's how I, I do it. That's what works for me because I don't want to stress myself out even more and all these calorie countings. It doesn't work because one calorie from another even though the same calorie, the food is different and it affects your body differently. So it just calorie in itself, it's not a telltale sign of whether you're gonna lose weight or not, right? So number four, uh, another tip is to stay hydrated. People think like, oh, you know, cause it's, it's really interesting. The brain is such a beautiful thing. It's like at least 70% made up of fluids. So like even just a little bit of fluids, loss, you know, like saying dehydrate, it will tell us, hello, 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 brain fine, I don't feel good, I don't feel good, give me something, give me something. And then people think like, oh, I'm hungry, and they'll reach for food. Try drinking fluids, you know, hydrate yourself, right? Uh, you lose a lot of fluids through, you know, breathing, uh, sweating, you know, like some of the signs, some of the things that we don't even know, like we actually lose 
fluids from that besides urinating and all that stuff, right? So stay hydrated. I try to do I mean, minimum eight glasses of water per day, but I'm going for three liter per day for my size and my, and of course on days I'm more active, I drink a little bit more. So it all depends on your body weight. There's a formula for it. Um, and also, you know, your lifestyle. Okay, so number five, number five is move around or go for a walk after you eat, right? And what it is is that it helps circulate, circulate the nutrients, circulate and all that burn off what is necessary. And it helps our body absorb like our muscle way to, to use that glucose faster, better. That way we don't feel like, oh, okay, I have a high, you know, I have a sugar high and then I go on a low, right? Our body's being able to use it and steadily, and it creates such an even balance that like, you know, we can burn it off easily and it makes us feel good. It circulates our system. And what's the important thing is that when you circulate out your system, you're giving your body the nutrient that it needs as well too, because it flows nicely. I mean, that's why anytime there's a blockage of anything like that, that causes problem that costs like not enough oxygen not enough nutrients and then that tissue becomes you know problematic right okay so number six number six this is so important in terms of for those who want to lose weight and cravings i dealt with this myself too <laughs> get more sleep sleep deprivation can suppress our hormone leptin which is a fullness hormone and increases our ghrelin, so that's our hunger hormone. So that's why you feel like, well, the reason, let me explain to you, this is my understanding from it. The reason being is that our body is so smart. It will tell us what we need. It will tell us that, especially when you're not, not having enough sleep, you're like, I need more energy. I'm lacking energy because of the missing sleep, right? <laughs> the point is to sleep more, but it would tell us I'm tired. And what does it do when it's, wanting energy, it will tell us like, hey, I need energy. And where do we get our energy? From glucose. Glucose is a form of energy that our body needs. And it will tell us like, get more energy by, well, I think you got it, right? From food. So one of the easiest way is from sugary and starchy food. So, you know, you end up reaching for whatever that's available. For me, uh, I find that, I notice that, you know, on days that I don't sleep as well, I would have cravings for all these junk food and everything like that. And then I'm more tempted to want to reach for those food compared to the days where I sleep better. Then I'm like, okay, well, the vegetable, the salad with that salmon in it, in it and it's delicious and sprinkle on some lemon. Mm, so good, right? So getting enough sleep will help you control your hormones, will help control your cravings, help you control your weight, and it's actually overall better for our health. So I hope some of these tips help you to get healthier. The point is not so much to just focus on weight loss. The point is to make it so that we are doing the things that actually help promote better lifestyle habit so that we don't get sick from, you know, all sorts of illnesses. We, we don't get like brain fog, you know, or we don't get like low fluctuation, of low energy or, or fluctuation of energy, low energy, mood swings and become insulin resistant and get diabetes. And then not only diabetes will affect you in many different ways. It affects your wound healing. Okay. It will affect how nutrients being distributed. It will affect your mood. It will affect whether you're gonna have high blood pressure, heart disease, cholesterol, and uh, increase your risk of uh, Alzheimer, dementia, and so many more problems. And I don't think any of us want any of that. So that's why it's important to focus on what we can understand, take many steps at a time. You don't have to go from here to there, like how, you know, like I'm a little bit extreme, a little bit, <laughs> because I'm able to, over the years, I'm, it's by increment that I have progressed to this point where I become so much more healthier. And it shows in the habits that I've, uh, you know, like I'm able to carry it out. And I find that it really helps me, you know, have so much energy and feel good about myself. And overall, you know, like hardly any signs and symptoms of anything. And just, it's just a feel good thing to know that, you know, I'm doing, I'm on the right path to this health of journey on mine. So I hope you enjoy this. 
click the subscribe or the like button if you find that this is helpful for you. And I'll see you next time and um, share with more information with you so that you can improve your health and become the creator of your health. That you know what, the health is in your hands so that you can take better control of your life. Okay, enjoy, have a great day.